Hi an Academy, my name is Pumika and this lesson we are going to study about the contractile tissues and muscle proteins. Firstly, I would like to apologize for being so late in publishing this course. I had made all these videos uh, some days ago only but due to some copyright issues they couldn't get published. But um, now that they are up, I think you can totally follow them and study from them. So in this chapter we are going to be dealing with the background data of physiology of contraction we we need to know about the proteins which are involved about the types of muscles and all sorts of things like that so that is why I have separated the two lessons um, let's get started so uh, this is a short about me section I'm pursuing for bachelors in biology I am an acting enthusiast and I'm always up for books and travel I love food as well. I uh, write a blog on fashion and beauty and my inspiration comes from everything peaceful. Apart from all of this, I love bullet journaling. So um, getting into the chapter, uh, there are some general points that I have noted down about muscle contraction. I'm going to read them out for you. Muscle tissue is responsible for the movement of the body and for the movements of its various parts with respect to one another. It carries out mechanical work by contracting which involves shortening and thickening of its fibers of course. It is made up of cells or fibers elongated in the direction of contraction and the contracting elements are the minute thread like myofilaments within the fiber. The protoplasm of the muscle cells is given a special name sarcoplasm and muscles are classified on both functional and structural basis and functionally they are either voluntary or involuntary. So diagrammatically uh, we are going to do all these three types. There are three, three main types of muscles. One is skeletal, smooth muscle and then we have got Okay, which is located in the heart. Right, uh, diagrammatically we have a picture of a cardiac muscle right here. Then we've got the skeletal muscle and then we've got the smooth muscle. We have got additional names for all of these. For the skeletal muscle, these are also termed as stri striated muscle because they, it appears a very striped um in appearance and then we've got the smooth muscles which is also termed as the unstriated muscle because it's not striped uh, right so let's go on to and uh, a point of fact a smooth muscle is also spindle shaped as you can see right from here okay so a typical skeleton muscle it consists of two types of tissues the contractile tissue and the supporting tissue because of this chapter we are going to concentrate on contractile tissue because we are concerned with the physiology of contraction and how the muscle moves so the contractile tissue of each muscle is composed of numerous muscle fibers and each muscle fiber is a multinucleated cross striated cylindrical cell and the length of each muscle fiber is between one to three hundred millimeter it consists of a cell membrane called the sarcolemma and encloses the cytoplasm which is known as the sarcoplasm. So uh, you need to remember these special names which are uh, used for the cell membrane and the uh, uh, cytoplasm of the muscle cell sarcoplasm and sarcolemma and there are two types of substances embedded in the sarcoplasm several nuclei are arranged at the periphery beneath the sarcolemma and a number of evenly distributed longitudinal threads called myofibrils are involved each myofibril shows alternate light and dark bands the dark bands are anisotropic and as such we refer to them as a bands and the light bands are isotropic and thus are known as i bands the bands of the adjacent fibrils are aligned transversely so the muscle fiber appears cross striated and in the middle of the A band there is a light H band and in the middle of the H band there is a dark M line. In the middle of the I band there is a dark Z disc also known as the crosses membrane and a segment of the myofibril between two Z discs is known as a sarcomere and a sarcomere is basically the simplest component which takes part in muscle contraction. The energy which is required for the muscle contraction is provided by oxidation of carbohydrates and lipids. We have already done this in my course which relates to biochemistry so you can check that out. The term mechanochemical reaction has been used for the conversion of chemical energy into mechanical energy. The pro molecular process underlying the reaction is known to involve the fibrous muscle proteins and the peptide chains of which undergo a change in conformation during contraction. Right, so uh, doing it diagrammatically we uh, studied the Z disc right here in the center and these z-discs are also known as the crosses membrane you can see the actin filament which is thinner and colored in blue and the myosin filament which is thicker and colored in red 
okay so this is the a band because it's the anisotropic band and it's dark we've got the lighter band which is isotropic and that's why we call it as the i band we also studied that there's a zone in um, in the a band which is known as the s zone a h zone sorry and then you've got a dark line going right through the h zone which is the m line right here okay so this is a magnified image the thicker red ones are uh, myosin the uh, the thinner blue ones are actin proteins then uh, these these uh, orange colored proteins are titan filaments these are very very elastic and they kind of you know connect the actin and uh, myosin of adjacent sarcomeres and you can also recognize the z disc present here and the m line going right through so this is more of a simplified diagram you can go through any diagram you can draw any diagram for yourself whatever you feel comfortable with both the diagrams are correct this this kind of you know makes everything very simple okay so let's hop on to the proteins in the muscles the muscle proteins are characterized by their elasticity which confers contractile power on the tissue thick myofilaments it consists primarily of myosin whereas thin filaments contain three types of proteins namely actin tropomyosin and troponin so let's start off with myosin it's the most abundant muscle protein which is a globulin and has three most important biological properties firstly it is spontaneously assembles into filaments of solutions of physiologic ion strength and ph and in fact the thick filaments consist mainly of myosin molecules myosin also acts as an enzyme engelhardt and lyubimova discovered in 1939 that myosin is an atpase so this is the reaction right here as you can see then uh, this reaction is also the immediate source of free energy that drives muscle contraction because as you can see um one atp is being utilized in order to produce a diphosphate so the atp is utilized in muscle contraction this basically states that myosin binds to the polymerized form of actin which is the major constituent of thin filament and it's a very large molecule of molecular weight 500000 almost and it contains two identical major chains and four lighter chains electron myograph shows that myosin consists of a double headed globular region joined to a rod and the rod is double stranded helical cable that is 1340 angstrom long and the globular region has a diameter of 90 angstrom you do not need to know these angstrom values these are just for your understanding but again it can be asked in the examination in the form of multiple choice questions so i think you can cram them in uh, 1053 uh, andrew zent geyer goal um i apologize for the pronunciation it showed that myosin is split by trypsin into two fragments called light meromyosin and heavy meromyosin the light meromyosin it basically forms filaments however it lacks atpase activity and it does not combine with actin electron micrograph reveals that lmm is a two strand alpha helical rod for its entire length of 850 angstroms okay so you can see you've got the helix right here which constitutes the myosin tail here and then we've got the myosin head so we've got the light chains present uh below the heads right now uh, let's talk about the heavy meromyosin these catalyze the hydrolysis of atp and it also binds to actin but it does not form filaments so that is how the light and the heavy meromyosin they kind of divide their activities heavy meromyosin consists of a rod attached to a double headed globular region and it can be split further into two globular subfragments such as hmm s1 hmm stands for heavy meromyosin and s1 i'll call that segment 1 and one rod shaped sub fragment called s hmm s2 each hmm s1 fragment contains an atpase active site and that is how it undergoes the reaction that we just studied and a binding site for actin furthermore the light chains of myosin are bound to hmm s1 fragment probably the light chains they modulate the atpase activities of myosin so that was all about myosin let's come on to the second um, major protein which is involved it is the actin actin is the major constituent of thin filament in solution of low ionic strength actin is composed of g 
G-actin, which is an end-to-end -end aggregation of numerous, numerous globular uh, subunits. So that is why, because it's globular, we call it G-actin. As the ionic strength it increases to a physiologic level, G-actin it kind of polymerizes into a fibrous form, and because it becomes fibrous, it's termed as F-actin, which closely resembles the filament. And F-actin fiber looks in an electron micrograph like two strings of beads wound around each other, and we concluded that F-actin is a double-stranded helix of actin monomer. So here we've got the actin, we have the actin filament and as you can see it is wrapped around itself and we basically have two chains like that. <coughs> Moving on, we have tropomyosin. The tropomyosin is a double-stranded alpha helical rod which is located in the grooves between two helical strands of actin and a troponin complex is attached to tropomyosin at intervals of about 385 angstrom. So let's try to spot tropomyosin here. So as you can see, every groove it contains a tropomyosin chain and this also is a helical chain. So uh, now you can see this in deeper detail, the alpha chain and the beta chain right here, both coiled around itself. Now let's come on to the final protein, which is troponin. Troponin is a complex of three polypeptide chains designated TPC, which is the calcium binding subunit, TPI inhibitory subunit and then TPT which is the tropomyosin binding uh, subunit. Troponin is an important control protein that uh, and as much as it prevents the interaction between actin and myosin unless and until it is combined with calcium ions. That is the reason why cal Ca2 plus ions they play a very important role in contraction process. The TPC that means the calcium binding subunit it binds with calcium ion and turns on the contraction process whereas the TPI it binds to actin turning off the process. TPT that means the tropomyosin binding subunit it binds to tropomyosin and it restores calcium ion sensitivity thus regulating the actin activity depending on the calcium ion level. So here we've got the diagram this is a myosin strand right here with the beaded structures they represent um, actin protein and then on regular grooves we can see tropomyosin right here and then we've got troponin with three subunits so as you can see as calcium ion the ca2 plus ions they start accumulating here it goes on and binds onto the central portion the central head will consider as tpc for uh, its binding with the calcium ion like that so as it binds the myosin is able to uh, slide itself and attach to actin and that is how contraction occurs. We're going to do this in deeper detail in the next lesson so make sure you check that out for the actual physiology. This was just the background data. If you like this chapter then you can follow me and you can also recommend this lesson to your friends. You can also rate and review me. Thank you for watching.